Chapman with the Alliance for Positive Health and today I'm going to be doing a food demonstration which is specifically for our Food for Life program. So what we're going to be making is butternut squash quinoa casserole. This dish is cool because it can be used as a side, an appetizer, you could add a protein if you're feeling really daring and you could use it as a main dish. First, I want to point out Butternut squash, I get a lot of questions about these actually. These guys, they're usually a better color than this. They're usually a real bright orange. I've microwaved this. People buy that thing in the store and they're like, well, what do I do with this, cat? I don't understand, it's so hard. It is really hard and it's really heavy. And if you cut it the wrong way, you can cut yourself. So you have to be a little bit careful with this one. So this guy, I've made my life easier by putting him in the microwave. About five, six minutes. As you can see, he's softer now, I can squish him a little bit. They have seeds. So, once you put this guy in the microwave, you wanna make sure you pierce him first. Okay, take the fresh one. You're gonna need a sharp blade. I pierced it with this, just the end. It's got a pointy tip. Stab it a bunch of times so that the air can come out so that you don't have like a little explosion situation. Put him in the microwave. About five, six, take him out. It's gonna be way softer. What you wanna do is, yeah, you can tell, see? What you wanna do is you wanna scoop out your seeds just like a pumpkin on Halloween. So you take this guy, you scoop your seeds. And that's gonna be the main component of this dish. So we want four cups of this guy, and for about a medium squash, you're gonna get just about that. And this, I would say, is about a medium butternut. So this guy, we're taking out all of our little seeds, all of our gunk in the center, like I said, pumpkin style. and we want to get it real clean in there. So this is the edible portion that's left over. Looks just about like this. Friendly reminder, if you're cooking for other people, your hair should be up. Mine's not, I'm gonna eat this alone. But if you're cooking for a bunch of people, even by yourself, it's good to put your hair up and wash your hands. That I've already done. So, this guy, what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna show you every painstaking moment of the process. I'm gonna cut them up. These need to be peeled. I'm going to peel the skin off, which is going to be easier for me because this is warm and soft now. You can peel it beforehand and then microwave it. This I like to be able to pull off myself. It doesn't matter. Either way, as long as the peel's removed, you're good. So what we're going to do after that is we're going to put this guy in a pan and we're going to roast him up with our other ingredients, which are going to be shallots. Shallots are basically what seems like a cross between like a garlic and a red onion. You can find them at the store. They're about yay big. And they're a little bit more oblong than like your regular onion, but they're still about the same color as your red onion. So check those out because they're really good in this recipe and they're just a little bit sweeter. So we're gonna add those guys in. And this recipe calls for an eight by eight pan. I don't have one of those. So I'm gonna use an 11 by seven. And then we're just gonna probably get a thinner layer of our casserole, which I'm okay with. And if I need to adjust my cooking time, I will. So since this is gonna be a thinner layer, I probably should shave off a couple minutes of my cooking time in the oven. Make sure you preheat your oven while you're doing this prep. That way when you put it in, you've got your right temperature to start with. All right, next step. Okay, so as you can see, I have the shallots. They're on medium heat. Check that flame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, normally what we would use is fresh sage, but you can use ground. There's really no difference. You wanna use about a tablespoon of that. You wanna sprinkle it on over there. And then you want to really babysit this, flip it around, mix it around in your tablespoon of olive oil. If you don't have olive, vegetable or canola works. So we're just going to move that around in there. I'm just going to use this because I got it in my hands. There we go. Better to have some sort of wooden or plastic spoon for this. Don't scrape up your pans by using metal. And then next step, we're going to add our squash. Okay, so now we've removed our butternut squash from the oven. It's got salt and pepper lightly applied to it before we put it in. If you've already microwaved it, you may not have to do the full 15 minutes like it says in the recipe. I chose to. That way it's this nice mashed potato-ish consistency. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to our already and still cooking pan of our shallots, which are getting relatively soft. We're gonna first add garlic. It says about six cloves. That's a rough six cloves. It's about an eighth of a cup. We're gonna add that in there. 
And then on top of that, once we mix this in, it says to add this in about 30 seconds. We want to add that last to keep it from burning. It's kind of a sensitive vegetable, if you will. So this guy, I got my oven mitt on because this is still hot. We're going to add our squash to this. And we're going to goop it right in. Everything needs to go in together. This is a casserole, so dumping things together is the name of the game. All right, we're gonna set that down. We're gonna mush it all in there together. Now to this, what we're going to add is a cup of our quinoa. Quinoa is a grain, it's filled with protein. It's super satisfying to eat, and if you've never had it, don't be afraid. It's super tasty. So to this mixture, what we're gonna do, pop our oven mitt off. Quinoa looks like this. There are different colors. You'll see tricolor, there's red and different colors, but White is what we're going with today. It's a whole grain, no matter which color you get. You rinse it before you put it in. It's already been rinsed. We're gonna add it into here. We're gonna pour that in on top of there. Then after that, we're gonna add a little extra seasoning. You can do cayenne, paprika, whatever makes you happy. We're just gonna do a splash of that. Little pinch, there we go, just to change the color on the top. To that, we're gonna add a cup and a half of broth. You can use whatever you want as far as broth. There's different kinds, but in this case, I'm going to use vegetable, and what you want to do is pour it around the outside and then go in. So what's going to happen here is that eventually this quinoa, it's basically uncooked right now, which is why it doesn't look terribly appetizing. It's going to cook over our medium-high heat, and it's going to break down and absorb what we've got going on in here, and it's going to give it extra flavor because it's broth and not water. Personally, I cook my grains almost 100% of the time in broth and not water. So we're just going to wait for this to cook over the stove here for a good, I believe it says 25 minutes, but we're going to keep an eyeball on it to see whether or not that's so. That's it. Okay, so our mixture was put at medium high for about 25 minutes and all the liquid that we put in from the broth has absorbed. So a cool thing about quinoa, it absorbs whatever you put into it. So I personally like to always cook my grains, rice, what have you, in our vegetable broth. When this starts to cook down, it's gonna make little strings or little spirals. That's how you know that it's done. But the mixture is by no means stringy, so no worries. Super important thing I should mention, guys, your quinoa needs to be covered. That's how it's going to absorb all the liquid down over here what we're gonna do is take this mixture and I'm gonna put it into the pan that I originally had the squash in so as you can see I've lined the bottom with fresh spinach it's in the optional notes in the recipe that if you want to add an extra green you may do so to pack your nutrient punch here so what we're gonna do is take this entire mixture and put it back in the pan that it originally came from and we're gonna to try to make it look pretty Scoop that all in there and kind of flatten it out. Make sure you get all the goodies in there. And make it into a flat surface, usual casserole style. Flatten it out. And before we get ready to pop this in the oven, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a half a cup of milk. We're going to pour it right over the top. This is going to add our extra moisture as well as one cup of shredded cheese, gruyere, cheddar, whatever suits your fancy. Right, we're going to spread that on about as evenly as we can and then we're going to pop it in the oven at 350 again for about a half an hour. We're going to check it every 15 minutes or so to Make sure we've got browned and goodness and that our milk has disappeared into there. So our finished product, we will see in 30 minutes. So we've taken the finished product out of the oven. Nice and crispy, golden brown, gonna be a joy to cut into, I assure you. Even with nice close-ups. 
All right, so that's our butternut squash quinoa casserole. If you guys have any questions about what the Alliance for Positive Health does or about the Food for Life program, the information will be in a link that will be at the bottom of this video. So I hope you enjoy checking out our recipes, seeing what we do. Any questions, give us a call. Bye.